is moving day. And it's not a regular moving today day. Today is a big moving day because we've been sitting on our butts for about two weeks. We took a break from the camera. But anyway, now we're moving. And based on circumstances, namely, we got robbed of our spare tire. Circumstances are changed and we're gonna alternate our path, which means today we've got about a six hour drive. We're gonna be driving through these Andy Mountains and down out of them about six hours. We're gonna have to go from 9,000 feet elevation to 15,000 feet elevation and then back down. So we have an amazing camp spot in the jungle. So we're gonna show you along the way. We finally started to climb up into these Andes Mountains. Like I said, this climb should take us from about nine or 10,000 feet up to 15,000 feet. So it's not quite as high as we've been, but it's up there. But the thing that's significant about this is this is going to be our exit out of the Andes. At about 11,000 feet, we turned off the main road, the typical path most people take through Peru. It turned onto a curvy uphill road. We have now made it to around 13,600 feet, and we are still climbing. I think Kurt has already told you this morning we're climbing over these Andes one last time for quite a while and then we're headed to a secret place in the jungle. Even though we've been enduring switchbacks, we cannot complain because the road has been in great condition so far. We're going through lots of little indigenous towns. And we have stumbled up on a new style of hat. We're calling it the flat hat. Now we don't know what these hats mean, but we do know that they have a significance and they change from village to village. But the flat hats are pretty cool. And in the background, you can see uh, the snow-capped mountain ranges and one of the famous peaks is the, I'm going to say this wrong I think, but Asungate and it is beautiful to look at while we're driving through these mountains. The dirt has changed colors. Now you might not think that's a big deal, but all these houses are made from mud. So in the Sacred Valley it was a dark rich brown here it's like a light khaki brown and so it just changes the whole look and feel of the entire area yeah and then right on the other side of these mountains is the famous rainbow mountain region of Peru huge tourist area it gets a lot of traffic each day and it is on the main path that most people go but I told you we took a turn off that main path. So we will not be taking y'all to Rainbow Mountain. We're going somewhere a little bit off the beaten path. Yeah, it's another casualty to the uh, spare tire robbery. We've been driving along this really pretty river that runs through the middle of these mountains as we continue to climb an elevation. We're coming across more indigenous towns and one thing that's really cool to me is the different flavor each town can have. Each town can have such a different vibe. One can be alive, hopping, music playing, and the next one quiet, like a library. But uh, we're also starting to pass free range alpacas, llamas, and sheep. And we are climbing, and we may make it up into the clouds. We're at about 14,200 feet Slow now. By the road. Oh, and there's snow on the side of the road. And we're not talking about me. <laughs> so, we're getting up there, guys. 14,200 feet. Let's see how high we go today before we get out of these Andes. So the ground out here literally looks like a sponge. driving at 14,640 feet 
right over there behind that big clump of cloud is the massive Asungate, the second tallest peak in Peru. And as high as we are, and the fact that we've been seeing snow along the side of the road, Kurt thinks, and I tend to agree, that these clouds may have a little snow in them. And we don't know if we're driving through that or not. But the ground through here is really cool looking. I would like to get out and walk on it, but not really at this elevation right now. But it looks like giant sponge. All right, we continue to climb. 14,994, 15,000. We are now driving at above 15,000 feet. I think our limit's what, 15,3 that we've been on at Chimborazo? Yeah. Or, uh, what was that other one? Uh, in Code epoxy. Code epoxy, yeah. But the reality is, at some altitudes, a few times we've had problems, primarily in Ecuador, we have had not not had any problems at these altitudes since with acceleration, knock on wood. Yeah, cross your fingers. This is the tallest highway we have been on, highest. Yeah, I think we may break our record. Now look out there. Wow. Just came up through that valley. We are now driving on a major highway in the middle of Peru at over 15,340 feet. We need to double check how high we got when we went to the refuge on Cotopaxi in Ecuador. But I think this is as high as we've had our van. And I think it is performing like a champ. And look at the view. Wow, surreal. I'm going to miss these Andes Mountains, that is for sure. 4,725 meters, 15,487 feet above sea level. Now what's scary is we got to go down. Yeah, <laughs> and I think we go down pretty fast, too. Yeah. But we've got new brakes and we will stop and rest them along the way. People living at over 15,500 feet and surviving. Twenty minutes ago, we were at 15,500 feet. We have dropped 4,000 feet and we have dropped fast. But the only thing that seemed to get in the way was a llama. <laughs> llama crossing. But no worries, guys. We still have 10,000, 12,000 more feet to go, so... <laughs> yeah, uh, where we're headed is supposed to be a fairly low elevation. And we always feel better when we get Vanna down below 12,000 feet, which we've done. We have pulled off the side of the road for a, a sandwich break. Vanna's taking a little rest on the dash. We're watching the cars go by. And most importantly, we're letting the brakes rest. <laughs> Lesson learned from our previous brake adventures. But we have probably two more hours to the camp. We will be completely out of the Andes by the time we get there. And a little hint, a little spoiler alert. We will not see these Andes Mountains again for probably six more months. But they have been amazing. Yes, they have. If you guys know your geography, we just shook things up a little bit. Y'all better go pull out a map. <laughs> Look at all the trees. We have found the bosques and selvas, the forests and the jungle, 10,000 feet elevation. We are now on the right side of the Andes, not on the desert side. I prefer this side much more. I am super excited to see these trees. 
That will be super exciting when we get down to the lower ground. So we're probably down around 4,000 feet. We're definitely back in the wetland slash or the jungle slash cloud forest. And it's obvious not only from all the beautiful big trees and greenery, but also there's just water pouring out of the mountains. And where you have water pouring out of the mountains, you have more waterfalls, which are cool. But what's not so cool is you also have more landslides, you have more places where the roads wash out, and things like that. You guys know us, we're not complaining, actually just the opposite. We're excited, I feel like I'm back in my home. <laughs> Today is a solo hike. Here's the map that I have. You see down here is the road. That road is where the van is. So I'll be walking this way down by the river. It's about a mile loop. I had intentions of getting up early this morning. I did get up early. I got up at like 3.30 and 4. And it's been raining all morning. We're in a rainforest. We're near the Amazon. Definitely in that type of environment. Actually, it's a shoulder environment between the Amazon basis and the cloud forest of the Andy Mountains. And so we're about 2,500 feet. It just stopped raining. So it's birds a little- started chirping. The birds are chirping. It's a little bit gray and overcast. They loaned me some big old boots. So I'll be slugging through the mud and the water. All right, I'm pretty excited today, guys. Today, today's a big day because I'm one day older than I was yesterday. I woke up healthy today and I get to go on a beautiful walk deep into the nature. This is going to be a solo hike. I have a liter of water. I got all my camera gear, drone, big camera, 360, everything because I have no idea what I'm going to see. So I can tell you right off the bat, the selva is dense. So the trail is cleared nicely. But once you look off the trail, look at how thick it is. But I do see a river in front of us. So just a short little walk. I don't know if I told you, but it's been raining all night. And so it looks like this river is raging pretty hard. So I just crossed back on a trail to head down to the river. And you can see why they told me I need to wear boots. It's pretty wet and marshy down here. And I'm coming kind of through this tall weed gra reed grass. I'm expecting that it's gonna open up. Yeah, here's the river right here up here. Interesting story. There was Three people here uh, staying at this little area, lodge, and they were bug scientists. And they were out here collecting bugs, aquatic bugs, to take back and identify and research. And they said that hardly anybody comes out to these areas. And so they it's not uncommon that they find all sorts of new unique species and they get to name them and all that type of stuff interesting conversation i saw a couple cool water birds here but unfortunately it's kind of starting to sprinkle missed a little bit so i had to put the big camera away so hopefully it clears up otherwise i may be limited in what i can show you now this is mostly a flat trail but there are some spots like that along here <laughs> stumbled because I don't have my hiking shoes on. I got these stupid boots. 
And to be honest with you, they'll keep my feet dry, but they're definitely not as comfortable or as functional as my hiking boots. And it looks like down here, we got a little river crossing already. Actually about a, a steep descent, maybe 20, 30 feet, 30 feet. See the trail scampering up on the other side there. To show you how straight down this is. In my junky boots. Actually, I'm quite grateful. These guys loaned me these boots, told me I need them. I always count on local expertise. So when they said I needed them, I didn't walk. And I am very, very appreciative. I don't want to sound otherwise. But I got a big step down here. And these rocks may be slippery. So I need to be careful how I do this. Ah, uh, easy peasy. Oh. <laughs> Look at this pretty little spot in the nature. All right. See that little blue tab on the tree? That's a trail marker. So let's be on the lookout for those so we don't get lost. There's another one. And we're coming right along this little stream right here. So that's what you hear in the background. The thing that's tricky about these jungles like this is it's been raining all night and there's a lot of roots and trees and things like that so those tend to be very slippery so you always got to be watching your foot placement when you're coming along here all right in addition to foot placement i also need to be aware of my hand placement if you can see a lot of these trees have little thorns and sticky things now I've learned the hard way when you slip and you reach up and grab one of those, the fall might be an easier way out. Some of those things got little toxins in them, so we're gonna be careful. All right, this is kind of interesting. So these, you see these little red flowers? I look down here and it looks like they're dropping little blue seeds. So see if we can get in here. This one right here still has the seeds inside of it. Sometimes you can eat those things and they're good little fruits, but I ain't eating nothing unless I know what it is out here in these Amazon jungles. Maybe you can make a little fungi stew. I can tell you right now, I'm looking for a blue little marker. Because <laughs> we're ducking and diving through this trail. Look at this. I just saw something scamper across the trail up here. I couldn't see what it was. Could have been one of those little rodents. Or it could have been a cat. It's on the ground. It's dark. But other than that, I couldn't even really tell you exactly what his tail looked like but it did run down this trail and the nice thing about trails is the animals like them too because they're easier to navigate than this thick so we're gonna keep quiet and see if we can't find something
So I believe that sound to be an aura pendula. You guys have seen those before. <laughs> you guys can see the thick of this jungle. I'm not over optimistic, uh, overly optimistic that I'll get a shot of any birds in this mess. But I do hear them off in the distance. I think you might be able to tell I'm going down quite a bit. And uh, the sound of a stream, like a bubbling cascada or something, keeps getting louder and louder. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't have another river crossing up here. I see water. You guys see the river? This might be the spot where they told me I would need the boots. Now the thing is, I would feel much com more comfortable walking across the rocks with my hiking shoes. But I already can tell you, these boots are not made for climbing around like I generally do. But this is a pretty beautiful river coming down through here. River crossing number two. And you can see the trail right across the way. Welcome to the jungle. We're looking for another blue marker. That was the first place I thought the trail was going. I don't know if you can see that. And then there's this one also. So, see through there, is that the trail? Or is this the trail? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I think that other one might be the show. I'm trying the other one, guys. I don't see a blue tag either place but the other one feels like it's going in the right direction so I'm gonna try that one although the most modest of all the river crossings I'm counting it as number three as we duck through these trees and low bamboo hoping we're on the right trail and definitely see where some of these weeds have been stepped down so somebody's been back here look at that pretty cool on the forest floor never seen one of those and it looks like <laughs> river crossing number four you guys know I love this stuff. Just a crazy guy wandering around in the jungle. <laughs> oh. River crossing number four. All right, this is a really giant ant. I hope you can see him. I can't put my finger in front of him. He's got huge, giant pinchers. He's on that bamboo leaf right there. 
See him moving? Let's see. Okay. We got him up here. Look at that guy. Got some big old pinchers. Wow. Can you see him? All right, that ant. <laughs> I'm, let me just put it this way. That was the biggest ant I've ever seen, and he had giant pinchers. And we're going down a hill again. And this is actually kind of... I could see straight down, there's a stream right there. So this is like a little berm, if you will, ridge that I'm coming down here to cross this little river. This trail definitely has a bit more technical aspect than I thought going in. And yes, here we have it, river crossing number five. Here we go. The trickiest part here, I believe, is the way down. So let me show you that. So you can see how crazy I am. Oh. Funny thing is, some of you guys think I'm crazy, while still others think I'm kind of a wimp. This is the part where I start to wonder if I'm a little crazy <laughs> because I haven't seen a blue tag in a long time. And remember, back there we took that split. I really wasn't too worried about it because the trail just didn't look that big. But when you get back up in here, It looks like we're at a dead end. I'm gonna keep going. This might be a trail. I feel like most trails, <laughs> the farther you go in, the less they look like a trail. Not too many people track through here too often. I looked at the GPS. I can see I'm a long way from the van. It doesn't feel right. It feels like I've made a wrong turn. And as I say that, I'm coming up to another river crossing. Huh. Decisions, decisions. As I say that, I looked down and I saw this this little blue piece of plastic on the ground. They've been using similar things as, as trail markers. So I don't want to tie it back onto the tree because I'm not sure if I'm on the trail. But I'm going to call that a good sign, guys. Crossing number six. And as you can see, I pretty much slid down that slope. So, I got that going for me. A lot of things to talk about here. First, I saw some pretty cool white and black birds, and there's some orpendulas flying across the way. It's cleared up from a tree canopy perspective, but look at the trail. It's non existent. I mean, it goes through there. But this, I see orpendulas' nest. I can't get a camera on anything because it is just, I'm standing up on a point there. Looks like this has all been recently whacked out but I don't see an obvious trail. 
I have an opening in the tree canopy. I'm gonna pop the drone up and see if I can figure out where in the heck I am. Unfortunately, the rain's setting in. I can see some thick clouds. I can't tell if it's coming this way, which really stinks because I definitely see lots of oropendulas and cool birds in this area, but I can't pop the drone up in the rain, which means I don't know where I'm at. Ugh. Which means I'm not just gonna go through these little uh, jungly messes, which means guys, we're backtracking out of here. I thought about it long and hard. And I changed my mind. I decided to slug through this little area. Oh, I gotta get up here and see these orpanduas. All right, it's grayed out. I'll try to get a better camera angle. Not promising. But that's an orpandula right there. You see? There's another one right over here. Sorry about the wiggle. He's up just above to the left. But those are orpandula nests hanging down there. I've showed you guys these in different countries. There's a lots of different varieties. I think these kind of have a yellow tail. Oh, there, look, he just flew into the nest to feed his baby. It looked like he had a butterfly or a bug or something like that. We first saw these in Costa Rica. We've seen them in Mexico, we've seen them all over, but I love these birds. They love to talk. There came one flying in from the left. Look at him flip upside down. Aren't these the coolest? Aura pendulas, guys. I'll see if I can get you some better shots. But, uh, <laughs> uh, he pooped. I also gotta make sure I can make it out of this jungle, so. Let me, uh, let me shoot these. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at him. See, so, yeah, so you could see his Oh, so much stuff's going on. But you could see his tail there kind of flash in the light. And there's other birds around us as well. Oh, uh, here comes one flying in. Uh, did he? <laughs> so if you look, you can see that Orpandula's inside building that nest right there. And so that's what you see him flying in and out with is little twigs to make these nests. So hopefully we can get a look at him right here. But see how his bottom beak, it almost looks yellow. I'm having a hard time picking up the color. But if he turns this way, we'll see he's green. His tail's yellow. Oh. So if I gotta loop back, I get to dig this scary spot. Not once, but twice. Eesh. So I got down here to this little ninth river crossing. I remember this is the ninth. And if you guys look down the river, you can see down there, I believe this dumps into that big river where we started off, which means we're probably tracking closer to getting back to the camp spot. At least we're heading in the right direction, I think, unless I stumbled up on another river, which is actually quite possible who knows i haven't seen any blue ribbons in like forever and well as you can see the trail is pretty narrow and growed up but there's some banana trees and now uh, where's the trail uh. 
Uh oh. There's no way of me knowing where the trail is because it's all opened up and chopped out. So nobody's been back up in here. Some big trees. This would be a cool place to see an Oropendula nest. Hi, Bay. I think that river crossing was the wrong way. Which means I gotta head back this way. And although I'm hesitant to get off the trail, I can follow the trail back, that's no problem. But I know, ooh, FYI, I ended up backtracking all the way back to this intersection. I think this was my first river crossing and I considered this way and I didn't go this way. So, uh, conventional wisdom would say, if I made it as far as I did, back, probably should just go ahead and go on back, stop the exploring. And I may do that, this looks pretty marshy, but I kind of like to see what's up this way. Whoa! Scratch that. <laughs> This is that point in your life when you're like, you know what? I've heard all this stuff about quicksand and I've never encountered it in my life. Oh, this is pretty darn close. Let's see if we can get out of here. Uh, not that way. I need a stick. Mm. <laughs> that adventure's over okay guys so i'm here with i'm here with klaus and we're gonna leave today but i wanted to tell you a little bit about this place it's on iOverlander and it's about halfway from our next destination, Puerto Maldondo, which is down a little bit more in the Amazon basin. Look at this little rodent out here. But in any event, it was 25 soles to camp here for the night. They did have a bathroom cold water shower with a lot of pressure. They've got these little cabins here they rent out. It's really kind of an eco lodge, very hidden and discreet. They do have some Airbnbs and it's just a nice place out in the nature. You guys saw the trail. And uh, <laughs> anyway, we are headed out of here today. We have a really, really, really cool destination coming up. I'm super excited about the next spot. I hope it works out. But this is where we're going to leave you today. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.